up everybody this is another episode of tapped in my name is drew zon back again with another episode this time i had with me my homie cameron avery echo street how you doing today? good man how are you thanks for having I'm me good bro um glad to glad that you're here um i've been wanting to get up with you for a minute um kind of carrying over from the the event that you had at be social definitely been looking at you for a long time as, as somebody that you know, i wanted to interview you and i think you have something that mm. you, can, can, you can contribute to the series okay. um but this series is called tapped in so um i'm interviewing a gang of people gang creatives that i i, I like or that, that are doing something in charlotte and i'm trying to get tapped in with them like okay touch base with you mm-hmm. but then i'm also trying to get you guys tapped in with each other mm-hmm. so I'm trying to say okay this girl does this okay i watched the, the tapped in interview she's tapped yeah. in this space i'm trying to get tapped into that space so if you could talk a little bit about what cameron avery is tapped into right now like the spaces the the, the things that you're tapped into right now mm. oh man Hi, that's a good question um honestly right now uh just like within charlotte in general mm-hmm. or yeah, just, just in general yeah so i've um honestly just been trying to get um get connected with uh just a, a lot more of the creatives here in the city i'm i'm new like i'm i'm on my third year of being here okay. in charlotte oh, um Ooh. yeah so like um like kind of still fresh still green in the city and so still trying to just like make connections with people and learn about what people are doing like where they're set up and stuff like that and mm-hmm. so yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm yeah. tapped into, to be quite honest. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, what are some spaces that you're trying to get tapped into as far as whether it's fashion, creative wise? What are some things that you're trying to get into, some lanes that you're trying to get oh, into? Oh, yeah. No, I think, I mean, it's, it's just kind of the breath. Um, I, uh, I I love I love just storytelling and I feel like I'm going to talk about that a lot just like kind of throughout the conversation. But mm-hmm. just like just anybody who's like using their their talents and their arts. Um, to just tell to tell genuine authentic stories I, I love seeing how people are able to use um their abilities to kind of like extend themselves and so like whether that is fashion design whether mm-hmm. that is like art or music um those are all things i feel like people connect to really easily even though they're mm-hmm. not like maybe that's not something that they practice or something that they're yeah. into every single day but like it is something that can inspire them and pull them into whatever they're doing and so just being able to like get connected with those people and just learn what they're inspired from, like what empowers them to keep moving forward. And so, yeah, kind of just to get tapped into the breadth of it all. Like I said, okay. I just like meeting people and hearing the stories. So. Word. So tell me a little bit about who Cameron Avery is, who Cameron is. Mm. I keep saying your first last name because that's on your Instagram. Right? Yeah, no. Yeah, tell yeah, me who yeah, Cameron yeah. is. Um, well, I, uh, Cameron Avery, born and raised in Memphis, um, Tennessee, uh, 25 years old. Um, I'm 25. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you carry yourself. You're right, but you're, you carry yourself like you're 28. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I'm the old. I'm the oldest okay. of my like of my family. So okay. yeah, so maybe that just kind of like comes with yeah. being like the eldest child. But uh, I don't know, man. I I I, don't, I guess it's a, a broad question. I, I'm a, a full time marketer. I have a. Um, I'm just about to actually start a new job, and so okay. um, a new uh, nine to five marketing job, and. And I love that. I love, um, like I said, I love finding ways to, to get people connected and inspired through mm-hmm. through something. And so, and finding like um, creative ways to tell stories. And so, yeah. So has fashion always been number one? That's the only way I don't know. You say if I keep going going by fashion or by no, industry, yeah, by yeah, yeah, yeah. No, So is, has, have you always, been, has fashion always been like the number one thing that you've been drawn towards? And, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say like the number one thing. Cause um, like I said, I just, I love, I love stories. And so mm-hmm. um, to kind of like uh, take it a full step back, like mm-hmm. I guess another piece of me is like, I'm, I'm a, a big time uh, soccer fan. Okay. I, I love soccer. Um, I've played a majority of my life coming out of Memphis. Um, and my, uh, like, obviously Memphis is a very like basketball heavy city. And right. so like, you know, I have like my, almost like my first love is basketball. My dad okay. played college basketball. And so that was like, and so did his brother. And so like, it's like really mm-hmm. deep ingrained into like how I grew up, where I grew up and in my family. And so somehow I ended up like being like the only kid in my yeah. entire family playing soccer. And so like, it just like, it, that drove me most of my life. Like I only mm-hmm. cared about playing soccer. And Did so- Did you want to go pro? Oh, totally. I mean, I think feel like anybody doing any kind of sport <laughs> at one point wants to go yeah. pro. And so like, I mean, that honestly, quite like quite honestly was like my only driving factor growing up, even going into college. Um, like I, they, I mean, I almost feel like I like uh, neglected myself as like a kid and even a- in high school because like I only cared about going to practice. Like I only, <laughs> that's the only thing I did. Yeah. 
if like the second I got a car, I didn't really go anywhere with it. I just, the only place that I went was to a soccer field wow. and I was just training. Cause that was like, I knew the next step that I needed to get myself was to is going to college and play. And so whenever like I, so, I mean, luckily I was blessed with the opportunity to play in school. So like I got a collegiate athlete along with that. Okay. Um, sure. Yeah. And so played at a D2 school and, and played there for a couple of years and, um, until kind of like I got hit with this point of, you know, I feel like everybody falls through this time in their life where they're just like there there's something that is disconnected with this passion that I have. Like I love it so much, but there's something mm -hmm. that's not um, equating into like actual joy. Like there's there's too much spiritual, like physical, mental, like detriment that is that, that this is bringing and, and mm -hmm. it's not bringing the happiness that I once right. felt from it. And so like. I kind of had to like make a really tough decision to step away from that and to step away from like a lot of things I was doing at that time. And so I was trying to figure out like, okay, well, you know, I'm in school two years in trying to figure, change majors, trying to do this. I'm going to mm -hmm. get back to your question, yeah, but like, um, like trying to figure that out. And so I, I was majoring in accounting and finance at the time, double majoring. Mm -hmm. I, it definitely was. Yeah. And so it wasn't, it, so it wasn't me either, but I was just <laughs> like, for some reason I was just okay. like, okay, this is like, it's somewhat get it. Like I'm under, I understand it a little bit. It comes easy um, to some extent. And I was like, I know I can make some money out of this, but it's mm -hmm. like, I didn't care about that because I was like, I'm like, I'm, I want to go pro. So yeah. like, I'll just do this until I go pro and then it's mm -hmm. like, move on. But like, so obviously that wasn't going to happen and I didn't like doing this. And so I was trying to decide on how, like what my next step in life was going to be. And I realized like, you know, towards the end of like um, my playing like collegiate soccer and even past that, like, you know, how everybody in, in sports obviously listens to music right. to get them pumped up. That's like, I mean, just even if you're not in sports or whatever, like music yeah. is obviously something that inspires a lot of people right. and connects you and, and pulls you up. But there but there was something else like I would listen to music, obviously, but then I would also like catch myself like watching like Nike advertisements, yeah. you know, like watching all these different Nike ads or World Cup ads before practices, before games to get me pumped up. And mm -hmm. it was just like this, uh, this kind of this instillment of like, OK, well, obviously their end goal is for me to buy a product. Right. Mm -hmm. But like they are wanting me to be able to like get my butt off the couch and go and do something. Yeah. Right. And be so, yeah, just be whatever it is. Yeah. Just do it or whatever just you want to say. And so. Um, like I, uh, like that was like, that's what I want to do. Like, I mm -hmm. want to be able to be a part of these stories that get people like up and going, whether it is like, obviously with a marketing standpoint, like getting somebody to come and buy something is the ultimate goal for a business, but like mm -hmm. to be able to, um, just create something that is going to lend itself to inspire and empower somebody to step forward. And so like fashion to go back mm -hmm. full circle to your question, like, Fashion is just like one of those mediums that yeah. I see as being a good avenue for storytelling. And so like, I don't think I was always led into fashion more so as I was led into storytelling and like currently right now, like mm -hmm. it's trying to develop that skill set of how you blend that story, whatever it is, yeah. into some sort of garment or item yeah. that it is um, representing. And so. that's what I was going to ask too, like when you said like fashion storytelling, off when you put those two words out there, it's like fashion storytelling, kind of how does that, how does that mix? If you could in your own words kind of mm -hmm. tell me how somebody would or how you tell stories with, with clothing. Yeah, no, that's a really good question. I think because that's something I'm still trying to, I'm still trying okay. to figure that out. Like I, I feel like, you know, I'm like I'm still very down here on trying to do that. Like I like I'm definitely somebody who's just a constant learner and like a, and and wanting to consistently grow and I feel like this is just like I'm at the very base level of it. So I wouldn't even call myself like a designer whatsoever. <laughs> okay. Like it's just that's not that's not who I am, but okay. like um how I would I guess necessarily say that in my words is just being able to to look back and to step into kind of like these things that I've done with Echo Street so far. It's just like, what's this broader like meaning that I'm trying to convey mm -hmm. or like, or that I'm trying to like um, present to somebody or just like show somebody, like connect somebody to this other person or to this story through this like piece of clothing. And so like either there's the design on the shirt or like, you know, even to going to somebody like an actual like full on like brand that exists like within mm -hmm. like Pierre Moss or something like that you know, like the cuts and the lines or just however the details of the stitching like blend itself to speak. Yeah. Like, so when you see it, like then you are connected to this, you know, this other meaning. Right. It has it has one like physical meaning right here. Mm -hmm. And then it has this one like right. ethereal meaning, I guess, if that's a word that 
exists beyond it, you know, to kind of like that you can carry with it. I think that's like a big reason why I like fashion in a sense, you know, of just like it is something that you can physically carry with you mm -hmm. as a as a representation of a story that aligns with your beliefs and aligns with like what you care about, right. and what you believe in as well. And so, like, I think that's a cool way to be able to like carry things with you like through life especially when you are meeting with somebody you're right. like you know sitting beside, beside somebody mm -hmm. like this is what i believe in like these are the stories that i want you to connect with me and that's like something that is obviously visible through fashion right and through like the things that you wear so i think there's a there's, there's a cool connection within that so. and was that do you feel like the, how your your mindset when it comes to fashion how, when it comes to building those relationships and storytelling where it was instilled in you at an early age or as an adult, you started to develop that, that love for storytelling. Yeah. I think it was like, it didn't really connect with me until like later on, like okay. at the, towards the end of college. But I think it's all, it had always been there. Right. Cause I, mm -hmm. I've been like, just, I've been such a Nike fanatic throughout my entire life. Too but like my, yeah, Exactly. Right. So right. like, but my lens has always been through kind of that, uh, uh focus in on soccer. And so it's just like being like, just just enthralled by like you know all these things that they've been able to put together and create that kind of just gets you inspired and so I think mm -hmm. like and I mean I love movies too I and I, I love to read and so I love like these other worlds that you can mm -hmm. like be brought into whether it is something that is realistic or something yeah. that's like you know completely fictional that does like take you out of like your current space and bring you into this new environment to be able to learn and grow from and then like bring it back into your day well, not get not to get lost over here but yeah. then to like be in that space and learn from it be inspired from it and then to come back right and apply it to like the your the lessons there into whatever you're doing so like to be able to you know see like see this movie or hear this song or um or or be a part of this experience and then just like have that tailored back into your work and i think that was something that had been building in me, but I mm -hmm. had not really hit until I was older enough to actually like process like, wow, these these are things that actually like compelled me to move right. forward, right? Before it was just like, oh, that's really awesome. It's just like, <laughs> I just kind of went into it. That's dope. Um, so I don't know. Um, another question, you, you mentioned inspiration. Uh, did, I, did I talk in the middle of it or no? Oh, yeah. Okay. So you talked about inspiration just now a little bit. And I heard from Dave, you're a big Pierre Moss fan. You oh, mentioned Pierre yeah, Moss. Yeah, yeah. They, they mentioned that, that you're a big Pierre Moss fan. So yeah. give me some of your, your inspirations, whether it doesn't have to necessarily be a fashion designer, but just some of your inspirations as a whole and what do they mean to you? What do you okay, so we'll start with first with Pierre Moss. What mm. do you draw from Pierre Moss? Mm, yeah, I I don't know, I, I I kind of like caught on to um what Kirby Jean Ramon was like doing with that. Um, like a few years ago when I was kind of just like trying to figure out like mm -hmm. what are these things that like I that do inspire me and um, you know like the the concept of his of his his brand being fully kind of like this art project is like what he would like claim it out as at least that's what he was doing at first it was just mm -hmm. like this is an art project that is um, that like I want to break this mold of what like the traditional like fashion house looks like or the yeah. fashion label looks like and I I want to go in and actually like build it off of these stories again just con continually connecting that back is just like every single one of his um like early um runway shows were all based on like the, so what like I, I can't I'm blanking on if it was his first one or his second one but it was on the Black Lives Matter movement okay. and it, it was all tailored to that which he almost was ousted from the fashion community basically because he was bringing that into the runway scenario which I, mm -hmm. that was not something that was done like you, you you didn't bring political conversations into into your your clothes in, in, into your clothing but more or less especially into like a runway um and so that was like hyper visible and so i think it was just something that was just really cool about being able to be true to who you are and, mm -hmm. and true to the things that you stand for um in front of people and and not being and not willing to crack underneath that pressure that is extended from like all forces right and so the the ability to kind of go in and like and then pull in these like black influences of culture that are um, not necessarily like highlighted just mm -hmm. in general but to give them the light that they deserve and then you know yeah. bring it in through the medium of of fashion and apparel like that's something that like I love about Pierre Moss is because you can you can see the the richness and the mm -hmm. heritage it wasn't just something that was like um 
you know, built in and created. It was like, it was thought, it was researched, it was thought about, and it, right. w- and it was, and it was designed with purpose instead of just like created just because like this looks cool, yeah. you know? And kind so, of segueing into, we're going to get back to more of the influence, which you yeah. kind of hit on a point talking about people just creating something with no purpose behind it. Mm-hmm. And I see a lot of that, like within the fashion industry, you're mm-hmm. seeing a lot of people that are just, oh, let me just go get a Gilded t-shirt and just, just print something on yeah. it and just do something and it's not really purpose. You're just yeah. really trying to get a dollar. Yeah. How do you feel that social media kind of has influenced fashion today in terms of people just trying to get a unit off instead of actually trying yeah. to tell, tell stories and stuff like that? No, yeah. No, and so like, and I don't want to like necessarily go back because I think there is a part of like just like art in general that does mm-hmm. have a place of it just being a, a space for the artist to create. You right. know, like that does that is kind of just falling in with like um, the aesthetic of it and just wanting to create to create. Like mm-hmm. I definitely believe that there's a space for that. Um, and so like I guess like to answer your question, just like you know from a, a marketing viewpoint, you know, like mm-hmm. um, social media has just been able to allow for anyone and everyone no matter where you are to have whatever you're creating or whatever you're doing out in front of everyone right you know so it's just like it does you you don't you no longer have to go through these different gates you know you can i can create this thing and i can put it on instagram Mm -hmm. and i can and yeah and i can hashtag it and then like somebody from you know china or somebody from um uh, Europe or somebody from you know next door is going to be able to see what I'm creating and so obviously there's like more into that that you have to do but I think that there it's kind of like if there's an it, so there's a benefit from that right? right there's a benefit from being able to um, extend yourself and to grow your brand and, be, and grow awareness through that I think the deficit is though it it kind of negates the um the process within it you know it's kind of what you're saying it's just like i'm just trying to like make a quick buck so mm-hmm. like i'm going to try to just do this thing and create it and just try to hop on this trend or do this yeah. fast fast fashion thing and get it sold really quickly because i'm just trying to make money because mm-hmm. at the end of the day if that's your only goal then like it isn't going to be built with yeah. purpose right? right it's just going to the only purpose is so that you can build cash and so like and then that's it's not wow. going to last right? Yeah, right and so i think that you know when you look at social media and i look at you know and you look at some i myself or anyone looks across through this screen like you're not seeing the process built so it looks like it's mm-hmm. just like oh he just did that you mm-hmm. know so it's that easy yeah. and so i'm gonna do that right right and so and i think that was something that i um was I'm, i was trying to continually be very aware of as i stepped into this space because it was very new for me to step mm-hmm. into the space i'm not like traditionally pulled into any of this and so like it was something new it was a way for me to extend myself into that creative in, 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 into that creativity and to grow into that but i wanted to continually be aware of just like there is more than what i see through this lens of right. like social media like mm-hmm. there's a process like it's not that easy like there there are steps there's research there's growth there's learning there's like there's you know a resume of things that need to build for it to actually to get to, that to, get, to get to get to this point you know yeah. that some people are and then there are there are people that like you know because of how social media is built like they can put it up there and then they'll hit that fast mm-hmm. track and then they'll go right and then yeah. there's others that it they, that might be a lot more established or that might have a lot more skill set a lot more talent mm-hmm. that it doesn't hit as fast you know and yeah. that's just i mean that's just kind of like the the fickleness of social media just in general I but think like that so. well, i think that's what separates a lot of people from like the doers from just people who are just watching mm-hmm. i think that that because of the process has so many steps and things like that it kind of separates those who are just trying to do it for yeah. for per- for for clout or just trying to do it for purpose because yeah. it's like if you're really trying to do this as like this is a part of you something you eat sleep and breathe you the process though rigid sometimes becomes enjoyable yeah so. and stuff like that it'll show it'll mm-hmm. show like if you like i mean consistency is a huge thing and so right. if you just continue to watch something you can tell that mm-hmm. you can tell like when when they've gotten bored or when they've gotten um, when they've gotten discouraged and, and they don't want to continue through that fight. Cause I feel like perseverance is the biggest thing that you right. need in life in general. And so no matter what you're doing. And so there's just a matter of like, you can, you can tell when, when that, that process and that thinking and that research or that, that drive was not 
put, built into um, like an actual um, goal, if only, mm-hmm. unless that goal was money. Because if right. the goal was money and you don't get it, then you're you're gonna quit, right? You mm-hmm. know, if like my goal is only to do this thing to make money, mm-hmm. and obviously I'm not making all the money that I wish I was making right, right. now. Yeah. Then like, why would I continue doing that, right? right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce out of that mm-hmm. instead of like there's a broader goal here, there's a broader broader dream here, like that's why I'm going to continue. I'm going to persevere. I'm going to, you know, strive for that. So, and I feel like that that's again, you, but you don't see that in social mm-hmm. media. So yeah. go back to your question. Like you don't necessarily see that all the time. So, so going back to not necessarily idols, but people that you look up to that, that inspire you, you name Pierre Moss. What's another person that kind of inspires you and why? Mm, I don't know. I've, I mean, just like anyone and everyone, I've like always been driven by like Jordan. You know, like as being as a kid, just like Space Jam was like the reason Beacon. I got into sports in general. Like, you know, like I wanted to be I like when I was younger, I wanted to be like, obviously, Michael Jordan going to the NBA. And then I was mm-hmm. then I, I hit a point where everybody was here and I was still down here. And so I was just like, OK, well, I'm going to stick it to ba- uh, stick it to soccer. Mm-hmm. And so then I was like, I'm, I'm just going to build myself into be the Michael Jordan of soccer. Right. And yeah. so like I was just like, there's this there's this mentality that needs to exist to be great right Mm -hmm. and you see that in i mean you see that in jordan you see that in um lebron you mean you specifically saw that in how like kobe lived out his life like you there's there's a there is a um a specific way to go about um um, driving yourself to be great and so Mm -hmm. that was always something that i wanted to tailor into anything that i did of just like i mean how i just spent most of my like childhood and high school just like i mean go, only only running only doing drills like only going to soccer practice just because it's like this is what i want to do and i know i want to be yeah. great at it so i got to push myself into yeah. it right and so yeah. I know that that's always been kind of like an inspiration for me of just like you know um what it like what it really looks like to um to desire that and to actually go for it and so mm-hmm. like i don't know you have that but then just also just being from memphis um there's a um there's a saying that like a few years ago when we kind of had like this, um, it was, I mean, we have a whole new NBA team now that I'm super excited about because it's all young guys with John mm-hmm. Morant and all those. Yeah. Like it's just, it's going to be really good. exciting. Yeah. to it's really yeah. exciting to watch, but like going even further back when we had Mike Conley, Tony Allen and Zach Randolph, Marcus all like these guys that like lived in the city. And again, like Memphis was so driven by basketball there was a saying through that time period, like coined by Tony Allen, that was just grit and grind, you know? And so like that became, yeah. And so like that became like the, 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 the motto for Memphis, right? It was just like this grit and grind mentality that, that he just, it was words that, um, that he just put to what was already there. And Mm -hmm. so I think that you see that throughout the city in general, of just like this, um, you know, like this, this mentality of like, we're not going to be neglected. And like, we are going to, we're going to drive and we're going to go through the mess of like, what is presented in front of us. And like, there's nothing that's going to stop us. And like you, I, I go back and I just, and I, I love, I'm so proud of the city because you, you see that. And like, whoever you talk to, whoever you meet of just that, that grit and grind mentality of like, you know, yeah. like almost like us versus everybody else. That was another mm-hmm. saying. It was just like us versus everybody like there was nothing that was going to stop us, you know? And so like, I, I always like go back into saying like, that is another aspect that built me, whether I realized it or not, you know, when I was younger, I don't think I was like mm-hmm. recognizing that, but I look back, yeah. But yeah. like, I look back on it later of just like a lot of those, that, that mentality was built out of just being in that city mm-hmm. and, and like, and growing in and coming from that city. Like, so I'm always like, we'll always rep Memphis. So now did Echo Street kind of start in Memphis as far as like you started to produce or things like that? Or did it start here? Cause I was going to ask just about the transition coming from a, from a city where you were born and raised and yeah, no. coming to a new city and then trying to start a new work here. No. Yeah. So like, I, I mean, this is something that I'll also always say, I just think I, I was built, I, like I, I, I was built in Memphis, but, I think mm-hmm. that creativity was definitely um, was definitely born and okay. in, in, um, in nurtured here because okay. I think it was by the time that I got here I was I was trying to um, I was trying to build myself. The reason I moved out of Memphis into a place like I've never been I had never been to Charlotte before so yeah. when I moved here it was oh wow. um, yeah so I kind of just came here not really knowing anybody and just like was trying to find a new like a new place that I knew like was going to grow me because I knew if I stayed home in Memphis, I would have loved it. But 
I would have there w- there wouldn't have been any um, any way for me to get outside of my box, you know, and get uncomfortable. That's right there. Get uncomfortable to actually mm-hmm. um, push me to grow. And so right. there was an opportunity for me to come here, and so I did. And I think that was what I needed to like actually extend into that creativity. And so um, yeah, so like Echo Street really um, was born here. It was okay. like whenever I was conceptualizing like this that like the the entirety of the project it, it started here and it started as like something else like it was an entirely different thing under a completely different name but like, the more that I built upon it the more that I like researched and the more that I like try to figure out like what is this actual broader thing that I'm trying to um, tell through this project um, it, it formed it, it formed itself into Echo Street and like which does have in, even in its name does have a connection back to Memphis because mm-hmm. I always wanted to make sure that there was yeah. like something that was like at least touching back um, to where I was from. And could so. you give that background? I know you gave it to us at the at your event. Could you kind of give us the background of where the name came from? Yeah, no. So, um, uh, yeah, so it a go, I guess it goes back into another big inspiration of just kind of like, I mean, for the project itself, but um, also, um, also for me, um, Within um, Memphis uh, during the civil rights era, there was a, a big um, a big strike. It was a, a sanitation strikes, and mm-hmm. so essentially, what that was was um, I mean throughout that entire process through that era, there was not uh, there was a lot of neglect to sanitation workers and to sanitation jobs, mm-hmm. and um, because they were mostly um, they were mostly uh, uh, African American um, job right. holders, and so they and it was because the the white community saw that as a unclean job for a white person, so no white person held that position mm-hmm. because it was just like I mean we're not going to be trash workers; it's too lowly for us, and so mm-hmm. they also did not lend it that that viewpoint that mentality didn't lend itself to making sure that all the things were. Um, prepped for them so right. most of these people had to go and and clean up the streets and take out the and, and, and do the trash and drive these um, and drive these uh, dump trucks and all these different things in their own clothes they weren't offered uniforms they weren't they um, none of the facilities none of the equipment was um, d- checked or double checked to make sure that they were safe or any of that it was just kind of this full neglect um, and into this just based off of like um, just based off of the, the matter of like this isn't good this isn't good enough for us so like we're not going to care too much about it and so um, one day there was um, two men that were hiding from um, the rain um, in, in Memphis and and so the in in their uh, dump truck and so essentially there was uh, a malfunction that happened because of a lack of doing checks and mm-hmm. making sure that the equipment was all good and, and they were they were crushed and they died. And so it, and it, it launched off this big thing of where um, these people were like, you know, complaining. They were going rightfully so going back in of just like there's like we got to do something about right. this. You guys got to do something about this. Right. Like stuff like this shouldn't happen. They said, no, just go back to work. So they mm-hmm. were legitimately forced back to work even after that had happened. And there was no um, compensation to the families of the men that died or anything like that. And so they kind of had to just bury like the, the bury these men and like they I mean, there was nothing to it. And so a lot of the city at that point said, no, we have enough. And so um, all of the workers came together and, and got a lot of the churches around in Memphis um, to, to come down and sit together and say, OK, we got to stand for this. And so they went on strike and it became a huge movement in the city of Memphis, but also in the civil rights era just in general. Yeah. And it was actually it was a big enough thing that brought Martin Luther King right, Jr. down yeah. Yeah, to talk um, that's where he did his mountaintop speech, and that was the his last speech before he was assassinated. And so it was why he was in Memphis during mm-hmm. his assassination. So that's where you see a lot of the signs of like I am a man that walk through. And so, uh, like the, one of my biggest inspirations is this image that you see all over um, the city, and um, in the end, there's a big mural like on one of the streets that I just remember walking past as a kid, and just like kind of just being like entranced by this image of these of these men and women holding the sign that says, I'm a man. And so there was just something about this. Again, I, I said it in this event, but something about like this holding of the sign as being um, as a statement to the viewer saying, this is who I am. And mm-hmm. I'm not going to allow you to tell me who I'm not right. like, this is who I am. Like, I'm a man. I'm a woman. Like, I am a person. I'm a human. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was also a, a statement that was I was holding for myself of just like to be reminded no matter what was being come and flung at me from mm-hmm. the outside this is who I am it was a reminder to myself as much as much as it was a statement out to the people in front of me 
And so, but being alone in that statement is, I mean, it's, is one thing, you know, but that you can't, you can only go so far being alone in that statement. So being together, um, so being with a line of people crossing a whole street, all believing that same thing, but that same statement was such a powerful image. And, um, that has always, always, always been with me. And so two of, and so, but the, going back to the beginning, those two men, you would have never heard their names. That wasn't something that was, um, mentioned much in the history books they actually just recently honored those two men two men i think it was either it was two years ago they honored them for the first time it was because they um it was just how they died being uh, crushed in a dump truck that was Mm -hmm. just kind of like um you know they was just like that was that was like too even even that was like it was too lowly of a death like it was not a sexy martyrdom to kind of put out in the history books you know to talk about and so it was just just last year or just two years ago they actually gave them the time and the space to say these are the two men and so um the two men were uh, robert walker and echo cole were the two names mm. um and so i um, wanted to give honor to that story and give honor to those um and, and to those men and so i used the name echo um with it and so the reason that it was echo street was because one of the highest honors that you can have you know in your city is to have a street named wow. after you okay. and so i wanted to call yeah. just to kind of always give reverence to um to these two men that mm-hmm. uh, were martyrs to this larger movement that really drove a lot of change in the city of mm-hmm. memphis and and quite honestly the, the the country at that at that moment in time for real and so um, so yeah, and so I also um, changed the name into an acronym for every community here outpours legacy. So just being able to um, look at, um, so just not be, to not um, to be able to look at all these different situations that you're in, um, no matter like where I came from or where you came from, of just like there's a legacy that exists within that person that yeah. it, it, that you know you you were kind of neglecting or you were putting off at the side, you know. And so like there, like every community here outpours legacy, like Rob, the the communities around Robert Walker and Echo Cole, like their their life and and and, and, the, and way they lived, like there is a legacy that existed from that. And so mm-hmm. um, so yeah, that's kind of like the long winded like hey, yeah. it made sense though like when you put it when you put it in perspective like i've never really thought about like a brand name being you know like using that street symbolism like what's the highest honor you give somebody you name a street after them and then you mm-hmm. put that into a brand that's really thought-provoking you know what i'm saying especially the, the the deep story behind it with the sanitation strike yeah with that going a little bit more into the actual the actual clothing how important is like I seen you post on Instagram saying you're minimalist now, right? You're trying, you're, you're to, trying be to be minimalist, least, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. with that, how does your fashion style kind of inspire what you're trying to put out? No, yeah. So I think um, I mean that's something that I'm still like still developing, still trying to uh, mm-hmm. and still trying to to study and learn and, and to grow. And so um, yeah, to like to go into that like the, you know I, the reason like kind of take a step back of going into the name echo street was like also like wanted to call it echo street was i wanted it to be something that was um you were able because that's such a that's such a like a a singular place like the echo um that's such a memphis related thing for an event that happened in memphis and so i wanted it to be able to be connected and you to find a connection to it no matter where you were from. Yeah. And so it's just kind of taking that th- reason of calling it Echo Street in general as well was to kind of take that same mentality of, um, you know, there's uh, there's the same street name that you can find in like every single city, you know, and the, there's a Martin Luther King Jr. Street in like every <laughs> single major city. And so it's just the, the matter of like, this this it was it's a representation of mm-hmm. it's a representation of like this uh, figurative location no matter right. where you're from that like inspiration can live from you know it's like i can track i can like take my like thought processes of like the things that grew me back to a specific location back home in memphis and so like and i know you can probably do the same mm-hmm. you know in your life of just being able to go back and it's like i know a lot of my inspiration happened in this place in this location right. and so like echo street is supposed to um, represent that place no matter where you're from mm-hmm. and so i think that um kind of just in, in in the world that we're like we're living in right now and just how big streetwear is like that was just uh that like made sense for it to fall within that category and, mm-hmm. and to and to learn how to develop itself in in that category because you know for me i think the essence of in in, in the um 
what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of like the the eagerness people want to be a part of streetwear is just because of the community that it right. represents. And so like that's what I wanted Echo Street to also be. I wanted it to be a community that some they, like you, me, or anyone can kind of go in and connect with and right. be a part of, you mm-hmm. know? And so like it just all made sense to kind of like tie into one another. And so, yeah. yeah. So like um, kind of answered it a little bit, but... Um, what, was there any fear in starting your own line and starting Echo Street and start and starting something? Whether you know, it, like you said, you you don't look at yourself as a designer. No, yeah. But was there any fear? Oh, I mean, totally. I think I mean yeah. you probably. I mean, any any creative, any any person stepping into something, um, and, and or stepping out into something yeah, right. is definitely there's a fear in it. There's um, I mean, like I said, like I just wanted to be always aware of like how I was presenting anything that I did and just making Mm -hmm. sure that like, you know, I wasn't trying to be something that I wasn't right. And and just being, or being too afraid that somebody was going to like look at what I was going to try to do and Mm -hmm. just be like, okay, like that's ridiculous. Or like, you know, because like whenever you try to, when you're, when you're creating something, it is a part of you. It's a, it's a part of who you are. And so like it is extending a piece of you out into the world to be judged. And it's essentially what you're doing. Like you were putting, like you Mm -hmm. were putting this content out to be judged by other people. And so like, that is a scary thing because, Mm -hmm. um, like obviously nobody wants to kind of hear that like negativity coming back mm-hmm. like but i think that it's so beneficial though to like to i mean want to kind of have that like it's, it's a huge thing to have that courage to be able to do anything yeah. like to create anything and then to present it out yeah. and say like hey this is something that i'm working on you mm-hmm. know like let me know what you think and then mm-hmm. to hear that good news but then also to hear like the yeah. and to hear the critiques because like I mean, that's the only way you grow is if yeah. you are able to hear the critiques and then be able to take that information and then come back and then like stir it up again and then be all right now, mm-hmm. what, like what now? So. Like with me, like what, how you said, it's like you, to, to be judged. I really like when I put the, this stuff out, like I'm just like, I'm putting it out because I think I'm, my goal is to, to inspire. Mm-hmm. If the goal is to inspire, I would say inspire, educate, uplift or whatever and entertain, yeah. but through some type of thought form or you know th- some type of thought-provoking content so when i put this stuff out i'm like man okay i'm not i'm not looking I'm like think i'm actually the first time when you said it, i'm like man i really am being judged because i'm like i don't think about it. i'm having fun i'm trying to walk on my purpose and i'm trying to feed the people give the people something so yeah. i kind of breeze by the whole like thought process of i'm actually being judged with my content like i know quality wise that's probably the only way as far as like me like the content mm-hmm. i don't think i don't really look at like I'm, I'm being judged but quality yeah i know i'm being judged like these microphones because i know i'm being judged but yeah so no but i mean it's not necessarily like i didn't want to say that into thinking like okay well you know you have to you have to consider yeah. that always as a, that's something but it's just not. but like it, you go into your question of like fear like yeah of course you know because like mm-hmm. like it is something that is just like okay i'm like Again, putting mm-hmm. myself out there for for people to, to for people to see the the things that like I love, you know, and care about, and so like that is a scary thing to do, you know, no matter what it is, whether it is something creative or whether you just were stepping into a new career or mm-hmm. like you know you move to a new place or just like whatever it is, there's always like fear in the unknown, you know, just like I don't know how this is gonna go, I don't know how this is gonna progress. I had fear moving to Charlotte for the first time. Mm-hmm. I had fear. You know, like I'm, I have like fear of going into and, and, and starting this new job that I'm about to like move into. Like I, you know, I had, I have just fear in, in anything that I'm like mm-hmm. putting, when I put Echo something out for Echo Street, it's just like, mm-hmm. there's a fear of just like, all right, well, how is this going to, like, how are people mm-hmm. going to respond to this? Yeah, it's because it's like, it. I'm like, you know, you, I'm doing something new. I'm doing something that is um, extending myself. And so, yeah. yeah. So with like you talked about your love for soccer and your love for marketing, I'm actually a marketer as well. I like marketing and I always be wanting to be that advertising guy doing jingles or whatever, but that's besides the point. But with that, what are some other lanes like outside of, like you said, storytelling? Are there any other lanes that are like a creative outlet for you? Yeah, no. um, Yeah, like I've really been trying to um, just uh, continually build like my knowledge and awareness of just like kind of art in general. Like I, I think... Um, like, and that's a very broad, that's a very broad, Mm -hmm. broad, um, um, subject and topic. But I think like, that's just something that has always been an avenue that has like caught my eye and something not Mm -hmm. necessarily like, 
you know, um, something that I want to like move into and then try to like create this career off of, but just something that I definitely want to continually learn from and grow from and to be able to be inspired by it, you know, to go in and do things with Echo Street or even Mm -hmm. like my own job or whatever that is by, um, by these works, um, whether it is like architecture or, um, it's painting or sculpture or just whatever. So like, I think art is definitely something that I'm like trying to like, just continually like learn learn or like from. paint or just like uh, I, I, I mean right now it's just learning you okay. know I, like i think i mess around i like mess around with like um sketching and different things like that of you know just um you know i, I love architecture i think i've always i've always like it's always been something that had been on my mind even as a kid like i remember being in elementary school like drawing out floor plans of like oh, wow. you know really? homes and stuff i don't know why it was really? such a weird thing yeah I'd be, like, I'd be like i'd be like little fit, like yeah. the dollar sign with the yeah, and the then six. like making yeah, this yeah, yeah, that's what i was doing no like i don't know like i was like <laughs> being in like fifth grade i remember like you know finishing like a piece of homework and then getting bored and flipping it over and then like taking my ruler and like this is like my dream home you know and wow. so like like, I don't know, there's always something about that that is, like, and then, like, going out and, um, like, especially, like, um, places like New York or, like, where there's, like, this mm-hmm. richness of, like, you know, art and architecture that exists or just in any other city, you know, that um, to go and, like, see these structures and to, like, again, go back and, like, what are they trying to, like, yeah. speak through this, like, this work of art, essentially. And so, I don't know, there's always been, like, a fascination with that for me. And so, like just continually learning about that um, and interior design and like I said, structure and like how, you know, how things are placed and why and where. And so, yeah, just learning right mm-hmm. now. Just like I want to, I, like I said, I'm, I'm a constant learner. I just love taking in information. Same. So, yeah. Do you find it hard? This is like totally off topic. Like with me, I was thinking about this yesterday. Like when it comes to, to reading and like, cause I'm, like, I like watching a lot of videos. Mm-hmm. I like listening to interviews. I like listening to just sermons, whatever. I just like listening and watching. Mm-hmm. But it's like really hard for me to key in on a book oh, because book, yeah. like I, re- I, wrote, I wrote a book before, but that I, when I wrote the book, it was like just cut, not cut and dry, but it was just getting to the point. Mm-hmm. And like the thing that I don't like about like reading books a lot is like it's just not it's not cut and dry to the point to the point so like do you find it like kind of hard like what are some areas that you you try to to like that learn learn it like whether it is it video primarily reading like what are, what is what's the avenue that you consume the most in no yeah i i think it, it's a mixture because like to go back it's so much easier to like watch a video than it is to, to like you know sit down and and take the time to read and so like that's just, I mean, that's just kind of a human nature thing. Like everybody, that's <laughs> right. like, everybody would rather sit and watch a video than they would read a book. Mm-hmm. But, um, I don't know. I, I try to like, I try to mix it up. You know, I, I listen to, I, I listen to a lot of things like, uh, podcast mm-hmm. interviews. I love doing that, um, on drives or whatever, just in my free time, even though, like when I go on runs and stuff, I'll listen to like interviews and podcasts mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But, um, I think there's, there's a, there's a, I mean, a value in just like, kind of like, in, in, in that process of reading that I, that I really do love. And so I don't know, there's like, there's something like when you have like a book in your hand, like you just feel like better, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, I don't know yeah, why like, it is. It's just like, and, that's and not to was. say, not to say like, it's like you a feel holier, like you're becoming more not, valuable yeah, exactly, with not that. like to exactly. say like it's a holier than thou thing, but it's just yeah. like, I, you, when you have this book in your hand, you're just like, like yeah, look yeah. at me, I'm reading. <laughs> yeah. And so and like, I think that's what it was for me. Like I started accumulating all these books because mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, the books, the book is how it become more valuable, but it's like really just applying the information that you learn. Yeah. So even if I don't read the full book, if I can skim three chapters and I learn something, from it that's better than reading a whole book and not learning anything because the retention rate when it comes to reading yeah, books is but the, so like so for that for me like i love taking notes so i love i, I love being able to go through whatever the book is mm-hmm. um you know on whatever the subject is and being able to like take notes like i'm one of those people that like tear up the book because i'm like writing in it or like i have like a journal on the outside that i'm writing mm-hmm. through just so that i'm able to Re, like retain that information just the same as I was if I was listening to a podcast or watching a video and I don't know I, I just it's always been something that I've, I've, I've loved to do um, even as a kid is reading so I've like wanted to make sure that I don't lose that and so mm-hmm. like I, I want to continue um, I want to continue reading I always have goals you know for me each year just like making sure that I'm going through this amount 
you know, uh, books, you know, just trying as like as, as just a goal, just so that I know I'm continually pushing myself. But then like, I mean, I also love watching videos. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily watch as many like interviews as I do, like listen to them on podcasts. Mm-hmm. But, like most of the times what I'm like, I'm watching something, I'm, I'm watching like a movie or a TV show or like a music video that is like, I'm, I'm wanting to like, you know, like that, that is inspiring to me. Yeah, right. That is like, you, you, yeah. That, yeah, just like that. I want, I want to kind of like see as like, as inspiration, almost like as research, I guess, you mm-hmm. know, so, um, so yeah. So last question, when it comes to goals, like you were saying goals, what, what's the goal for, for Cameron in 2020? What are some goals mm-hmm. as far as whether it's with Echo Street or just personally, what are some, some goals for you this, this upcoming year that you're trying to get done? No, yeah, my, my biggest goal right now is I'm trying to get into grad school. So okay. yeah, so that's like, that's my biggest thing. You. Yeah. Grad school. <laughs> so yeah. Day. So yeah, more yeah. Proud to you. So my yeah, so that's that's my biggest thing, and that's the that's the next step I would like to take in my career uh, is 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 pushing for that. So like my mm-hmm. like if anything, my goal is to start that in the fall. Um, okay. I'm working through a portfolio right now to submit with my application and then get it done by this like this month and beginning of March, and then um, you know start it in the fall. So then that's my biggest goal in regards to everything else. Just like continually grow. Um, I'm. I'm trying to continually develop Echo Street into um, into the process that and, and create the process and the systems that I want it to um, eventually uh, build itself into. And so, like right now, that just looks like you know putting out like these kind of like separate one-off projects right now that kind of just like mm-hmm. are um, working with other people and kind of like um, showcasing their talents and their abilities while also telling a story through it. So yeah. Okay. Cool. So could you shout out your social media for everybody so they can go follow you? No, yeah, totally. So, um, yeah, my social media, Instagram and Twitter is at Cameron A. Avery. Cameron, C-A-M-E-R-O-N, double A-V-E-R-Y. So, yeah. And, yeah, I appreciate you coming through. No, yeah. Thank and Echo so Street, much. at Echo yeah, Street on actions, Instagram. Yeah. So follow that, too, yeah, just, to be, Check out just to be with it. So. So I appreciate, yeah. you, appreciate you guys tuning in. This is another episode of Tapped In with Drew Moves On. Check, out, check back in with you soon. Peace.